Thank you. All right, Foundations of Math and Pre-Calculus 10, we're going to do a combined lesson 6465. Please turn to page number 357 in your textbook. That's the start of 6.4. So, we've already talked about slope y-intercept form. We've already talked about that. It's y equals what? Help me out here. Y equals mx plus b. Right. So m is the what? m is the slope. Okay. So if it's in this form like this, m, that, that's the number that is multiplied by the x variable. Okay. The one that's attached to the x. That's the slope. And this right here, b, is the y intercept. Now, just to test you, okay, um, what is what is the slope of this line right here? What's the slope of this line right here? Yeah. It's negative 3. Correct. Why is that? Because the number that is multiplied by x is a negative 3 right there. Very good. Even if it's in a different order, you can still figure out x-intercept and y. Okay, what about the y-intercept? Slope y-intercept. What about the y-intercept, which, for this one, is? Negative. 5 or negative 5? Which one? Yeah, it's, it's negative 5. Okay? Negative 5, that's the y-intercept. Here is the slope. Okay? Good. What about this one? y plus 2 equals x. Now, I'm mixing things up a little bit, but remember, you can find the slope and the y-intercept when it's in this format, right? That's why it's called slope y-intercept form. It's like the format. So, can you just look at that and tell me what the slope is? One? Okay, who agrees? Who agrees with one? Correct. Slope is one. What about the y-intercept? What's the y-intercept? Negative 2. Okay, anybody agree with that or have another suggestion? 2. Okay, which one is it? 2 or negative 2? One of those is correct. All right, remember, if we get this in the proper format, this is what we have. So, the answer of negative 2 is correct. The y-intercept is negative 2. Okay, um, just going to do one more here, one more little test for you. Okay, what about this one? Um, one half x minus y equals negative 17. Now, without rearranging that, can any of you sort of rearrange this in your head and tell me what this slope is? Sorry? One half? Okay. Anybody agree with that or think it's something else? N negative one half, maybe? Okay. Positive one. Okay, who votes positive one half? Who votes negative one half? Who doesn't know? There should be a lot of hands. Okay, all right, because <laughs> you didn't vote for the other ones. All right, so if this is a negative y, right? If we took this over to the other side, it becomes negative one half. But this is a negative y, so the format is always positive y by itself. So then we'd have to divide by negative one, which would change this sign, and the slope is positive one half. So I think most of you voted for that. Very good. Make sense? And the y-intercept then is negative 17. Is it? No? What is it? It's positive 17. Why? Because remember we divided by negative. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to back this up. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me just back this up here and I will show you now how you'd work this out, right? Okay, so we would have negative y equals negative one half x minus 17, correct? Divide by negative one, both sides, or multiply by negative one, whichever one will look at it, that becomes positive y, and then all the signs change over here. So the y-intercept would be positive 17. Okay? All right, a couple of the questions that you need to know how to do. And I'm just going to go back. I'm going to erase this for now. We'll talk about that in a bit. Let me do some more work over here. 
What about y equals uh, negative 3x plus 2? Do you know how to graph this line? Do you remember what we talked about in previous lessons about how to graph this line? Anybody brave enough to remind us all where we start? What do we start with? We start with what's right? Okay, somebody said negative 3, somebody said y intercept. What is it? Which one's the best? Where's the best place to start? The slope or the y intercept? Yes, right. You want to start with a point, okay? Because that's kind of where it, your starting point. So plus 2, let's say we have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So positive 2, that's on the y axis, that is going to be a point on the line. We know that for sure because that positive 2 is part of the equation. Now there's many other points on this line, but we know for sure that this is one of the points on the line. Okay, so we start with the y-intercept. That's number one. And then number two, you would use the, uh, the slope there. So what is this rise over run? Negative three is actually negative three over what? One, that's the same. So from this point, and this is important, don't start from the origin. Don't start from any other point, but start from the point that you just put down and you uh, use the slope to plot another point. So this is negative three, so you could put the negative on top or on the bottom, it doesn't matter. But one of those numbers has to be negative, so it's either a negative rise or a negative run. One of the two, and it, it doesn't matter which one. So I'm gonna do negative three, so that's the rise of negative three, so I go up or down. Right, one, two, three. So I go down three, and then I go which way? Left or right? To the right, one unit. And there's my second point right there. Okay. Now I could do this as many times as I want, and I could get multiple points. You see, one, two, three, over one. I'm just over and over and over. You can keep doing that. If you have a ruler, um, make sure you use a ruler and do your best to put a line right through those points. Okay. So. All right. So there's kind of what your line should look like. The other thing is a good idea to label your line. Make sure you have this somewhere nearby your line. Okay. So that's graphing a line. Any questions so far? So one other thing I'd like to talk about just as we finish 6.4 off here is I'm going to give you some questions that are word problems. And I want to go over just uh, a couple word problems uh, examples so you know kind of where to go and what to do with those. So let's take one for example. Example 4. All right, example four, it's on page 361. It says, the student council sponsored a dance. I'm actually gonna get this textbook up for you. The tickets for the dance cost $5 and the cost for the DJ is $300. Okay, so if you look at this example here, there's a, there's a school dance or event that they've, uh, that they're putting together. Each ticket, okay, so it says a ticket, but we're going to be selling multiple tickets, right, for each student. So a ticket costs $5, and you can think of it as $5 for each ticket, right? The cost for the DJ is $300. So it's a $300 flat fee for the DJ that's providing the music for the night. The question says, write an equation for the profit P dollars. So we're going to be, um, we want to know what the profit is. What is that equal to? on the sale of T tickets. So do you see the two variables here? You want to pick out those two variables. P is the profit and T is the tickets. So what is the explanation of the profit in terms of the tickets sold? Okay, And you have to take into consideration that if you're a person that's organizing this thing, you're going to be selling these tickets, right? So that's going to be money that's going to be coming in uh, that you're going to make. So $5 per ticket. How do I write $5 per ticket? 
5 times t, or just 5t. Good. Does everyone understand that? $5 per ticket. Now, obviously, the profit's going to be in dollars, so that's why I've got 5. You can put $5 here if you want, but you don't. it's not necessary to put un, uh, units in your equation, okay? So we can leave that out. Now, remember, do you know what profit means? The profit is the amount of money that you end up with at the very end, right? So it's your revenue minus what? Minus the cost. So the only cost that's mentioned here is that $300. So we're making money selling tickets, but we're uh, spending money on the DJ. So the total profit would be everything that you revenue coming in, and then someone said it, minus the cost for the DJ right here. So minus 300. So that's your answer for A right there. P equals 5T minus 300. Any questions about that? Any issues with that? So we've got to read it through. You might have to read it a couple times. Write down or, or, or at least highlight you know, the important parts and then try and put it into an equation. All right, B says this. Suppose 123 people bought tickets. What was the profit? What does this 123 represent? Okay, so how many people bought tickets? So that is really T, right? 123 tickets were sold. So the profit here for B, profit is... Five dollars times, um, sorry, times one, two, three, minus three hundred. So what's that total profit? Well, get on your calculator and turn it on five times one twenty-three is six hundred fifteen minus three hundred. Oh, minus. 300, so that's 615 minus 300. I'm sure what the plus came from, sorry. 300 is 315, right? <clears throat> so the total profit, if 123 people come, is $315. That's taking into account all the tickets that are sold, plus all the money that you have to pay away, right, to the DJ. Everybody get that? Yeah? Okay, so we're just using this equation, um, and we're, okay. So C says, suppose the profit was 350. How many people bought tickets? So now, sorry, go ahead. Okay, how do you do that? Oh, you just guessed. Okay. So we could we could guess, but how would we set this up? Because you want to show your work here, you want to work with this equation. So where does the 350 go? Yes, well, by P, in yeah, it is P. Right, right. No, that's good. I'm, I'm glad... See, because some people might say, hey, it's 350 times P. Like, uh, some people may think that, right? That's true, but it's not correct. So instead of P, we put 350. Okay, very good. And I know you didn't mean to say that, but I'm glad you did. Because somebody might think that. Because here we're multiplying by a variable, so, you know, some people might say, oh, multiply by this, but that's not true. Okay, so 350 is your profit, and we want to find out what T is. So you see, we're solving now for t. What do I do first if I'm solving for t? Add 300 to both sides. Thank you. So I get 650 equals 5t. And to get t all by itself now, the final step is divide by 5. So what is 650 divided by 5 is 130. So this is 130 people. Let's see if this makes sense. We had a profit of 315 for 123 people. This profit is a little bit more, and the number of people is a little bit more. That makes sense, right? If you got 7,130 for the number of tickets, you might, you know, you might want to say, hmm, maybe I pushed the wrong number or something. Okay. Could the profit be exactly $146? Now. This is a comprehension question. Could the profit be exactly $146? Well, 
how do we find that out? So some of you are saying no already, but how do we how would we find that out? Okay, so let's set 146 as P, and then then what? You're on the right track. Want to finish it off? Okay. 5T minus 300, and then we solve for T. So what are we looking for though when we solve for T here? Okay, you're looking for if it's a decimal. So if it comes out to a decimal, what does that mean? That, that means that we would have to sell a portion of a ticket to get that number exactly, which is not possible, right? You can't sell you half a ticket, right? So that's yeah, exactly right. So this is 446 equals 5t divided by 5, divided by 5. What? Um, yeah, I know, but I, I've added the 300. I, I did that. I did that uh, in my brain. So what's uh, 446 divided by 5? I, I know this is going to be a decimal, right? How do you know that? Because this is not a multiple of 5. So it doesn't really matter what it is now. You know it's not possible. But what is it just for kicks here? 89.2? Okay. So do you see that? We'd have to sell 89.2 tickets to get exactly that. Not possible. Any questions at all? This example? Okay, so I think you guys are uh, ready for the 6.4. Uh, that's that. You know what you need to know for 6.4. So um, that's the 6.4 lesson. We're gonna do. I'm gonna do the 6.5 lesson here as well. Just gonna give you an intro. Um, so, but that's that's for 6.4.